What's going on, Workforce? Brian and Chris here, back together again. The band is ready to rock and roll post-media tour. Guys, we got some kick-butt announcements for you guys. This Thursday, Jesse Cox and Rin are joining us for an epic podcast talking about the future of Final Fantasy XIV and Endwalker as a whole. So guys, you don't want to miss that show. Uh, we've got it posted. Links will be everywhere. Uh, really hope you can tune in live. I'm really excited for that. Then, What's on live? Uh, 10.30 a.m. Central uh thursday and uh again we'll, we'll have all that out uh for you guys so hopefully you uh, check it out but also uh chris and i are facebook creators we've kind of been hinting at it we've got facebook exclusive content you would have find out llama todd's favorite cereal you got to check out chris's facebook page we've got some of the cool hard hitting questions yeah but it's so much fun it's it, it is it allows us to kind of really just lean into the humor lean into the comedy and do all kinds of things also i'm over on ginger prime gaming facebook Links will be in the description, guys. You can go check that out. If you get the opportunity, we really appreciate you going and following us over on Facebook. And thank you guys for the support. And today, with these announcements out of the way, we've got more coming your way. November 5th, keep it locked to the channel. Twitch specifically covering the next live letter. That's going to be PvP. That's going to be crafting a gathering. A lot of the core questions that people keep asking post media tour. We now we we already had the date. So just note we are still in this countdown to Endwalker. Chris, today we're talking about housing and inadvertently Island Sanctuary. We've got a lot of questions that have been going on across the interviews. You've been chronicalizing all of it. Why don't you give us a summary of what we're going to dive into with this video and also what people might be coming? <laughs> what other videos are coming out this week? So I have three video uh, interviews still to do and a couple of written ones. Um, so far, I've kind of created a running list of 106 categorized questions. Um, some have sub questions within them. So there's over 106 things, interactions with the OCP. I will be breaking those into categories and putting them together and bundling them over on Ginger Prime, uh, on Gaming Kinda, because Gaming Kinda is a place that those can live and those can serve as like a place where we talk about one topic. Um, because when you get all, in a single interview, you get to know what that person thinks is important. But if you take all the things of a single topic, you end up with a really good feel for like what they think is more important than something else, what their plan is with updating it, when, um, and you get it set a couple of different ways, which yeah. really helps with things like translation and the format of, you know, a question phrased one way gets a slightly different response than the same question phrased just a little bit differently. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I'm excited about that. Housing. Um, I made this into a big category the first time I came across a housing question because I just assumed they would be there. Yeah. I just assumed there would be a ton of housing questions. There were only two explicitly housing questions. Now, there were some things down in the cosmetic section that we may end up pulling in a little later in this video, depending on where it goes from here. But the first one came from Gamer Escape, and it said, can you talk a little bit more about how that lottery works? And will there be plans for rolling the lottery into older systems? Um, keep in mind, I'm naming the outlet because if you want to go see its full context, I encourage you to go out to Gamer Escape and see the full thing. I'm TLDRing this. We also um, always encourage people to go out to Gamer Escape. They've got incredible articles. They got an incredible podcast. They got incredible creators and, and people yeah. go follow them. Yes, absolutely. Go ahead. Um, so once implemented, we're going to allow for certain wards, not individual plots, but the entire ward to be designated as a lottery ward or as a first come first serve ward. This will include past wards. So they will go back and they will break each ward into type A or type B. This will allow for the de development team to designate that ward. And when somebody moves out, whatever that ward type is will determine what the action is moving forward. So I own a house after 73 hours of sign clicking. Um, if I were to move out of that house, what happens to that plot will be determined on what that ward gets labeled as when this system rolls out. They didn't yet talk about that timeline. Housing is something we expect closer to that 6.1 time frame. So early yeah, next year 100%. at the earliest. Right. The second February. question. Just putting a timetable um, on that. The, uh, the second question, um, no, no. The other question gets off topic. That's it. That's that's the big one. Um, so I think from here we start to talk about like Island Sanctuary. We yeah. start to talk about uh, we start to get off topic wildly. So we'll we'll see what else we need to pull in based on how you're feeling based on that. I think that what I'm really looking forward to seeing is a with ha with housing and with this answer that some wards are first come first serve, some are lottery. That in and of itself I think helps alleviate a lot of the pressure. Chris like did multiple streams what was it 72 hours or something else like of actually being clicking a sign like clicking the sign that is the first come first serve model 
that is the basically you could kind of think all wards right now are first come first serve others are going to shift to a lottery and that's going to be obviously applied to you going and trying to get a new house uh, i think lottery is going to be ultimately interesting because what they've talked about already is that you put the money forward and then you are in you know the lottery and i'm wondering you know like what that kind of payout how long that's going to take and along with Ishgard, uh, Ishgard housing, I think that's a perfect time to roll out those systems. But obviously, we're still waiting for six one. Assumedly, here's the real here's the real assumption here, because we've seen servers delays, data centers that you know it could easily get pushed past six point one if necessary, because there is a lot of server resources that go into this. Ishgard alone is adding in more servers. And obviously, we know that uh, Square Enix has been having a, a hard time acquiring the, the necessary servers to be able to uh, accommodate this. Is there any concern on any kind of delay in terms of housing uh, on your end, Chris? So actually, I think what your response right there actually makes me, I'm just going to kind of guide us through some interview questions yeah. here. So no, do it. What, I think the, um, what I think the interesting direction you took there is you took a, a heavy emphasis on pacing. Um, and when we look at pacing, the MMORPG.com uh, had a question talking about for the upcoming year, the expansion with the new story promise, um, will the pacing of patches remain the same, right? We're moving into a different a era, era, a different yeah. saga, as it's been referred to multiple times. Um, and here's where I think this would All surprise right. somebody who's been covering this game for like 11 years. I don't know if you've seen this one. Um, I have not. Is he it. said, I cannot say at this point i yeah if the content pacing is the same i don't think we'll ever come to a point where we would look at the major patch update cadence and take a three and a half month update so i don't think we'd ever be the kind of game that would go like 200 days that'd be crazy he said <laughs> i don't think we'd ever because his exact this is one of the spots where he threw shade at wow he said i he don't think a lot we'll of shade he just didn't do it by name took the major patch update and we took a three and a half month update schedule and changed it to half a year that would be crazy, right? I mean, not. Uh, so no need to worry about it. But they are reevaluating. Like, they are looking Good. down and saying, Good. like, we are looking at the next 10 years of this game. And there was a number of questions yeah. where they hinted at the next 10-year plan. And he wants to talk about that with us as a community after the launch of Endwalker. He wants to sit down and yeah. let us know what his plans are. And that might mean we locked ourselves into five patches per expansion. Maybe it needs to be six. Maybe it needs to be three. We don't, like... It, I don't need to obligate myself to the previous 11 years. You know, what's a hundred percent. I'm really glad that you, that they asked that question and then he answered in that way, because if you actually go look in other interviews, cause again, you've covered more of the interviews. I'm still getting caught up, but I've seen, I, you know, <laughs> it's, I, a lot. it's a lot of interviews, <laughs> but essentially when you look at those, like a lot of content is focusing in on uh 6.1, meaning he's saying, I'm going to talk to you guys about 6.1 that you, that tells me as an 11 year person of this game, is that I remember when he said that last time, and it was when they dropped in October the 2.0 details. Now, I don't know if it's going to be to that degree of refinement, but typically you got to know that like N Walker was written in 2019 or 18. Like they don't, they're not just like, oh, in 6.1, we'll figure it out from there. They've got this plan in place. They have an idea of a direction where they're going. And one of the things that we haven't really gotten in a long time is a roadmap and a lot of that is because the story is so important to the game you don't want to sit here and be like and here is the plan however when you look at finishing the saga there is a whole new world i keep coming back to that phrase like it's a whole new era a whole new age i keep thinking, like the whole disney uh, you know song with aladdin and jessamine but this is a great opportunity to kind of reset refocus look at what we want uh, 14 to be in the next 10 years and also like when him him going off really excited about playing new world i think that when you look at how the industry is kind of shifting within this genre it's a great opportunity to say like hey they're doing something cool hey they're doing something cool and that's one of the things i really think that when final fantasies kind of finish the saga whether they go to a like a four month or a five month cycle yeah let's i think he's gonna have that conversation with the community i think 6.1 or after n walker sometime in the new year we're gonna see him talk about his plans for the next 10 years of Final Fantasy. And I think that's gonna be really exciting to see. Scary for some people, but I think that when anybody who's gonna get scared by what he what he finally reveals to us, it's just gonna be that that curve. They're gonna be like scared and then angry, and then they'll be like, oh, this is actually gonna be amazing. 
uh, in the, you know, the long run of the game. Ooh, I did not, I like that. I like the fact that we could actually be considering talking about the pacing because what are we in it right now, Chris? Change. It doesn't mean it will, but what are we in right now? 5.5 .5 was a long time ago. And it's like, okay, like, is there, is there, is there room for another like content, you know, cycle within, you know, the prior to expansion? I don't know. Maybe, or, maybe, or do we get games. more voice acting per patch if the time between patches stretches out? Oh, right? there, there could be pros and cons across the board. If we drop from five to four, yeah, do they get meatier? If everybody, do we end up with ha instead of half patches, what do if we, we got at third Spanish? patches? What if we, what if we had 5.13 and 5.16 and then 5.2? Or, you know, like what if, right. what if we slid more sub patches in? But what also if we ended up getting Spanish support? Like, what, like that is a constant question along with Xbox. We, we get those two questions a lot. So what is it? And I think as a community, I, 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 would, I would love to be able to welcome in like yeah. the Spanish speaking culture into into this game. And I would like it if they were on global servers, not off like on Korea or, or China. You know, it's like that would be really good for the game as a whole. I think that would be really good for Square Enix. But what we know about their, you know, translation schedule, like, yeah, they would have to reevaluate that that cadence. But there's other things they can do like add more housing. <laughs> yeah, when I was trying to cover a lot of this, I found a number of interviews in Spanish. There's actually a surprisingly large number of Spanish exclusive creators that were invited um, for it not being an officially recognized um, language for Final Fantasy XIV. And um, when I was in their comment sections and Google Translate was grabbing all those, a ton of those were, I can't play this game because I know a little bit of English, but not enough that this much story would be fun. Mm -hmm. And like there were these comments that were getting translated that were effectively like, I would love to play this game. I love RPGs, but like I can't I can't do this because it's not in my native language. Like yeah. I know enough English to get by, but like not to sit down and this be my source of relaxation. Yeah. Now the other side of housing to keep kind of this in, because this is all somewhat related, is the island sanctuary thing that's probably going to blow up in everybody's face drama that is on the horizon and i say that right. because is animal crossing like uh, like uh sorry animal crossing excuse me is island sanctuary like animal crossing because yoshi p said that it's not but i'm seeing a lot of people get really excited saying that it's like final fantasy's version of animal crossing despite what yoshi p directly said chris how do we break some hearts today but at the same time have people still go oh but we, it might be so if you want the original source text, it's in both Shinpai and Mioni's video. They both posted the full on either of their YouTubes. So it is in there. Um, and the question is, are there any details that you can share on Island Sanctuary? That's, that's it. Um, and it starts out by him saying, we had no idea it was going to get this level of reaction when we announced it. Yep. I mean, they released a watercolor with the two words, Island, Island and Sanctuary, sanctuary next yeah. to each other. And people were like, I'm no longer going to raid. I'm just going to log in and do this all day. And it's going to change my life. Like I, this is cyberpunk in final fantasy. This is, this is the greatest thing of all time like that. And they didn't tell us anything. <laughs> they just put those words. That's next to the each problem other. though. Like to sit here and put it down into like, they've been incredibly communicative, like overall, but whenever they don't, it's the same thing with, will there be male, male bunnies and, sh and shadow bringers? Like, the community will take the lack of information and put their own hopes and dreams into that bucket. And occasionally it works out, right? Like you did a video saying, guys, yes, there are uh, data mines that it looks like flying is coming, but if it doesn't, let's just, let's just chill out because until they announce it. They never publicly it. said air or flying was coming prior to right. it showing up. Right. And they've never said what Island Sanctuary really is going to be. They have now stated what it won't be, and that I think got people even more excited. So at this point, they've said so little. So the next statement he went on to say was, I do not want to approach this um, and risk people misunderstanding what we're trying to do. So until we can show screenshots and or gameplay, um, what I can do is give a bit of a disclaimer. So all he said is, I can promise you I'm about to say nothing. So the disclaimer is people think it's similar to Animal Crossing. Now, a whole lot of people just threw their headphones off, shut off the stream and walked off. It's yeah. Animal Crossing. Comma. Blitzball. I did that. Like he's uh, somebody was like, he was, he was memeing Blitz Blitzball and I threw my headphones. I was like, is it coming? No. Oh, go ahead. 
But Animal Crossing is the result of many generations. It will not be of that level. Okay? So for all of you like, yeah, I heard it was Animal Crossing. Did you just Google words that were in the statement and move on? Like yep. the sentence was, for those of you asking if it's Animal Crossing, it's not. It's not. And <laughs> like, then, but yeah, you'll probably, you probably could Google Final Fantasy Animal Crossing and that's going to be how things get tagged and people read he just read headlines and then they'll you know that's what that's what i'm hearing like i hear animal crossing's coming to 14. i go man i hope it does because otherwise he then went over the timetable now a lot of things that people asked about but they were not in 6.0 he either referred to them in being in 6.x or as a similar phrase that means the same thing he said 6.1 or later. Those are interchangeable. They both don't say anything. Yeah. Because it's either 6.1 or later. Yeah. So it doesn't say anything. Right. <laughs> Which is so, what we said back when that we're going into the in the last live later. We say if they do not talk about Island Sanctuary, it is not in 6.0 at what we, we, what we would speculate right now based off of everything. I'd say 6.2, even though we were talking about 6.15 or something in that nature later. I don't know. He said it will be in the 6.x and will be updated regularly with the aim of being new large scale content. Mm -hmm. Large scale content for context is also a relic grind. Mm -hmm. It's also Ishgard Restoration. Yep. It's also Blue Mage. Yep. It's also PvP. Yeah. Those are all large scale content that they intend to update regularly. Such potential devastation. It is possible that they once said, I we weren't covering the game in this, I wasn't covering the game in this way during ARR, that grand companies were large scale content that would be regularly updated. <laughs> yeah. I would believe that. Yeah. So just take that for the complete lack of context that it is. The concept is, and this is where this is where we're starting to get closer to where people have decided that this is the greatest thing ever, is that your island will be a blank canvas. What types of buildings you place, yeah. what types of materials you gather yeah. as a concept, yeah. as a loose watercolor of an idea. Do I want my minions to run free? As opposed to, this is not content where you will compete with each other. Right. There will not be a competitive nature of this. You will never feel like you have to do this to do something like get tombstones as an example of the sort of concept of things it is not. Okay? You will not need to do this each week. The, the goal here is that this will be your own sanctuary, not to get you something like a super strong weapon, right? Comparing it to the relic grind. This is an area where you can relax. Call your friends over or visit your friends' islands. That's a stark contrast to a previous interview where it was implied that you would not be able to visit your friends' um, islands because of some technology they were looking to implement. Namely, if there are something like glamour dressers, not explicitly glamour dressers, mm -hmm. glamour dressers are the reason that we can't, you can't have glamour dressers in a shared space. And so them saying you can visit, that does start to clue us in on either tech technical updates or the type of space they want this to be, because that's a, that's a pivot. You will be tending to crops or raising animals as a concept. All of this, I think people can understand. This is not where I've seen anybody go crazy wrong yet. Here's where I saw even Bellular get this wrong. There is content focused on housing, gardening, and placing furniture. There is existing in the game. You can do it now. Maybe. <laughs> Once the, the lottery comes in comma but this is something higher than that with something broader uh with broader content in the mix meaning here's personal housing and here's island sanctuary there is a distinct divide in that but if yeah. you remove that comma there is content based on housing and gardening and furniture and this is higher and even broader and you don't pause and you're like oh, this it's is gonna personal be the best. housing yeah it's I can build my house. I can build, housing. I can craft the walls and build it the shape buildings. I want. Yeah. Farmville had buildings. It's not personal housing. Yeah. Garrisons in World of Warcraft had buildings. You could even go inside them. It's not personal housing. Yeah. The problem in all this. Dome and Enclave had buildings. Yeah. 
not personal housing. Problem in all this is that no matter what us preaching to our, you know, our community here, it could be, you know, like there's still that, that's still going to be that light of hope. Could be. It could be, but I would just try and do everybody like the best favor you can and set your expectations to this is an MMO. It's if they do get the things that you want, it will be rolled in with time. We're getting updates to the trust system. We're getting like, it's, it's not a game that like on 6.0, they say, well, we did it guys. We're done. You know, they're finishing the story, but the game will still evolve. So just, just trying to, I don't know. I'm just trying to prevent like the, the freak out whenever it showed off. And I, I hope it beats people's expectations, but the expectations, I think just like they are right now with ashes of creation are setting up Yoshi P to fail, right? Like it's setting up the dev team to be the bad guy when they didn't deliver the thing that they never said they were going to deliver. And that's what we try to. If these expectations get any bigger, it could be the single largest and most ambitious piece of side content ever added to the game yeah. and still disappoint people. Yeah. That's the problem is we're letting expectations get so high that there's no room for reality to succeed. Right. And if reality exceeds expectations, it's a really great day. So there's no downside to playing down your expectations is I hope it's really something fun. Chocobo racing, really fun. You don't do it every day. Right. You know, there's lots of really cool things in this game. Sightseeing logs, really fun. You don't do it every day. So you, there's all sorts of cool things you can do and say like, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be new side content. I'm excited about it. Maybe it'll rival Golden Saucer. Maybe it'll, you know, maybe it'll be something I can engage with my crafters and gatherers. Maybe it gives me a better use for pets because Lords of Arminian isn't my thing. Mm -hmm. I don't really know. I'm excited about it. And then just leave it there. And then literally any details start to make it exciting, start to make it real. But if we take and we read between these lines to things he explicitly did not say yeah. for fear that if he said anything, we would misread into it. And we go, ha, 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 let me misread into it. We've set ourselves up for like guaranteed disappointment. The um, We got a lot of content guys rolling out this this week and more. I uh, cannot wait to share more of the uh, breakdowns of the interviews, uh, more uh, information with you guys about Ann Walker. Obviously, like we said at the top of the video, uh, November 5th, keep your calendars locked for that. We're going to obviously do what we do and summarize the live letter, have the discussion and uh, and, and break it down for you uh, live as well. Uh, but that's that's going to be it for this video. Like there's there's so much more to talk about. And um, if you hopefully you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed yet here to work the game, hit that subscribe button. Thank you for getting us over 70,000 subscribers. Uh, slowly making that march towards that 1K, 100K, excuse me. <laughs> uh, silver play button. Play button. Oh, man. It's gonna it's surreal. Uh, Chris, why don't you take us out, man? Guys, I'm going to be summing all these up and pushing them over to gaming kind of over a whole host of things. Brian is back in full force, so expect Ginger Prime to be online pumping and going. We are excited to have big podcasts coming this way. Not just a huge one this week, but many more to come. So definitely keep it here. Hang out with us live. Take care, and we'll see you next time.